So the last thing and probably the most exciting thing that we want to take a look at is how we might build and save clusters in Grasshopper version 9. Now clusters are a way for us to um, develop modules within our definitions and it's really useful for working with our clients or with other members of your team or across teams and even building libraries of definitions or parts of definitions that you can reuse in other contexts. So the first thing we need to note is uh, there are two objects on the params utility tab that allow us to define our cluster input and output. And then whenever we have a set of elements that we want to create a cluster, uh, we can select them. Uh, say that we want to create a cluster through either the right click menu on the canvas or through the, the edit drop down menu. Once we do that, our canvas, collection of elements on our canvas changes. We can then see, if we hover over it, it has a series of properties and a preview for what's inside. If we double click and go inside the edit options for the cluster, we get a new kind of look where the, the canvas is blue now as a hue, and um, we can work with the cluster, edit it, and then navigate through returning back to our definition by either saving or discarding changes through the icon at the upper left. And once we have our cluster, we can update the properties by right clicking and then take that cluster and save it as a user object. This stores it in our uh, menu at the top and across the ribbon. Um, we've specified our own mode lab tab here at the far right. Uh, so you can specify where it goes in the existing or in a new tab what the icon should look like and what the description is. Then you have a new user object and this is a file that you can locate on your hard drive and share across team members um, or uh, share it on the web with um, other people out there using Grasshopper, etc. So it's a really great uh, collaboration tool. So let's take a look at how we might take our last exercise and turn it into a cluster. All right, so Let's say that this is something that we want to do frequently. We want to be able to spray a mesh with a set of colors and then apply a blurring factor to it uh, so that we have this nice um, kind of soft edge across the colors that are assigned to our mesh. And we want that to be dynamic with a set of points that we define. All right, so let's go ahead and build this out as a cluster. Now, what are the key things that are going to go into this cluster? and how it's going to be reused in a future context. Well, what are inputs for arriving at this uh, geometrical solution with this blurred mesh? Well, there's the mesh, there's the colors, and there's the points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of build this cluster in situ. I could go ahead and try and build this out through the cluster inputs, etc. but I actually like to build it as it's working in a kind of slightly different manner instead of using those objects, then use those objects uh, down the road, uh, the input and the output for the cluster. The reason I like to do that is because I like to ensure that my cluster is going to work uh, before I actually create it and save it as a user object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a parameter for each of the three types of uh, inputs I want to have for my cluster. We said that was going to be a mesh, some colors, Here and a set of points. Alright, so these three objects are going to be my input. Alright, so what's, what's my, I'm going to go ahead and get this all right, what's my mesh that I want to um, turn into my cluster? Well, it's this weld here. That's going to go in. What colors do I want to assign? That's going to come from here. And lastly, what points are going to be a part of the cluster input? It's those points. So now that I've got, these are going to be essentially my inputs. I can group them and call them that. All right. Now I'm going to replace everything downstream with those specific inputs. So there's my mesh. Those are my colors. Those, those are my points are going to come from there. So basically everything's got to funnel through here. I missed one of the things I need. I need the number of iterations. So I'm going to drop an integer also into the canvas. Connect that to my slider and replace the input there. Add it to the group. Those are my inputs. All right. Next thing I want to do is 
I want to, I need an output, right? So I'm gonna take a mesh parameter. That's gonna be my output. Turn the preview off there. Copy and paste it. And this is gonna be uh, what's gonna come out of the cluster. All right, so this mesh is my output. All right, this is gonna turn into my cluster. And before I do that, before I actually make it a cluster, I might want to give it a little bit more information. Each one of these parameters has a name by default, generically mesh, color, etc. Let's go ahead and rename this. Let's say this is the mesh to color. Let's say these are going to be my spray colors. These are going to be my spray points. These are going to be my number of blurring iterations. All right, now those have names, and my output, I should also give it a name. Maybe it's the blurred mesh as a result. All right, I'm going to take all of that, select it, including my groups. Those will go into the cluster as well. Then I'm going to go to Edit Cluster. So now we can see what difference um, giving those names uh, gave us. Uh, we now see that we see that a more verbose uh, label for mesh to color, the spray colors, the spray points, and the blur iterations. And it's still working, right? I can see the result and uh, change the blur iterations. I can change one of these colors and see what's happening, right? Meanwhile, my cluster has been created, it's working. And now I can go in and say, all right, well, uh, I want to give this some more information. First of all, let's go and take a look at the, uh, the hover option. If you hover over it, it gives you a little preview of what you see inside the cluster. And it says that it occurs once in this document. It has a little information about uh, who made it, that's me. And then if we go ahead and say that we want to right click and um, let's look at the properties, right? We can say, uh, okay, well, this isn't just going to be called generically cluster. This is uh, blur a mesh or spray and blur mesh. The nickname, maybe it's SB mesh. This will spray and blur a mesh based on proximity to points. Here I can change the icon. Maybe I want to say that it's going to have a different color to it. Specify some information here if you want to put in your email for someone to correspond with you if, you, if they have questions, if you're sharing it with them, etc. Hit OK and now this has all that information uh, attached to it. Now I can go ahead and say maybe I want to go in here and I can see I can work with my cluster inputs or output here. I might need to make a modification. Uh, let's say that we needed to ensure that we always had enough colors. So we might repeat the data from the colors based on how many points we have. So do a list length. In case I accidentally only gave it three colors. Drop that into C input here and um, we're off and running. I can save and close this and now if I were to say only give it three colors it's going to work because it's going to apply white twice. All right we've now updated our, our cluster and given it some more functionality. I like the blue better. All right that looks good. All right the last thing is um, I actually might want to not share this with someone else where they can edit it. So I give, if I give them this, they can just go in inside of it just like I did there. Instead, I might want to assign a password, right? So that you need to know what my password is in order to access the inside. And when we do that, you can see that even the, um, the pop-up here that we get when we hover our mouse over it says the cluster is password protected. It blurs out the preview of what's inside. And we can't get in there until we actually assign, um, specify what the password was going to be. All right? 
So there we go. Uh, we've now got a protected element. And now let's say I want to share this and I want to be able to use this in some other context. I'm going to take my object and say, let's create a user object. It's going to inherit all those properties we just gave it, which is great. It's going to go on to the category. These are your uh, top level uh, ribbon labels. ML is for our mode lab tab. I might say, well, it's not really related to either of these things, so I might give it a new name. Something like custom previews. Again, you can change the icon if you want. I'll just hit OK. Now, if I go back to my new tab, here I have the spray and blur mesh object. I can drop it in. It's still password protected. And I can assign the inputs in the same way that we just did. And it will work. Right? That's now also a file. If I right click it, I can go access the information about it. I can give it an alias for a shortcut when I'm um, accessing it through the canvas, um, through the double click menu. And I can also uh, find where that object is. I can go to my special folders under the user object folder. Here it is, spray and blur mesh. That's a file that I can share with someone else and they can just drop it onto their canvas and it would add that object to their menu bar under the corresponding name. So you've seen some, uh, some people add this kind of option to the files that they distribute. If they've even already included an add-on that you can install through a kind of Windows installer, you might get a set of user objects that go with it to extend its functionality. So it's a really great way to kind of encapsulate something that you might do frequently um, or share it with someone else across your team members. So that does it for building and saving clusters. And that's the end of our course today of what's new in Grasshopper